There is one concept that you have to understand if you want to have an effortless and powerful swing. And the concept is that the force precedes the motion. So simply, in the backswing, I need to be putting pressure into the ground with my trail foot before I start the motion of my backswing, and I have to get pressure into my lead foot before I start the motion of my downswing. That's as simple as the sequencing can get as far as descri describing it, right? So the best way to get this feeling is to do a drill that I call the teeter-totter drill. Now you may have seen some things like this online, but you don't have to have one of these to do this drill. It just makes it a little bit easier to feel it and understand exactly what's going on. So if you wanna make one of these, it's very easy. We made, we did, this is a DIY job right here. We just took a piece of uh, one by 12 oak. Um, I recommend using a hardwood. It's just gonna be more rigid if you use a hardwood. If you use a flimsier wood like pine or something like that, it might bend a little bit on you. But if you don't have as much you know, weight as I do, it may not be as big of an issue. Um, and then we took a one by one screwed it to the bottom in the middle there. And then we actually, you don't have to do this, but we took some door stoppers and put it on the sides there. And that just makes it so you have something to push against. You don't feel like you're sliding down it when you're pushing it back and forth. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna step on this. And in the setup, what I like to have players feel is I like to feel like they have more pressure on that lead side to start with. And the reason for that is it makes it easier to shift that pressure into the trail side. And in my opinion, it's a more powerful and athletic motion to do that. Now, you can start out very, very balanced, and you imagine the teeter-totter is level here, and I'm balanced on this, and shift the pressure that way, but you're not shifting as much pressure that way, so it's just not gonna be as powerful, but you can play around with it and see if that works for you. And then also, you can start with the pressure on your trail side as well, already have it there, but again, it's not, it's not shifting that pressure. To me, it's not as powerful and athletic, but to you, it may feel a lot better. So play around with that setup position and see what works best for you. But when we look at majority of, of tour players, you know, by studying you know, the pressure graphs that they have, you've probably seen those pressure masks that they stand on. You know, in studying those, I've seen that most of them are gonna start with a little bit of pressure, a little bit more pressure on that lead side, and that allows them to transfer that pressure into the trail side. So that's number one. We wanna start with our pressure forward. And then before the club starts going back, right? So before there's any movement of this club, we wanna shift that pressure. And I want you to feel like you're pushing this end of the teeter-totter and pushing it into the ground as hard as you possibly can. That's what you wanna feel like. That's gonna make it as powerful and as athletic as possible. So I'm here and I'm pushing into the ground as much as I can. So as I mentioned before, the pressure or the force precedes the motion. So I need to be getting pressure into that lead foot before this club starts going down. So the only way that I can do that is to start shifting pressure toward my lead side and start recentering that as I get up to the top of the swing. So typically we're going to be starting that pressure shift, you know, somewhere in this area of the backswing, somewhere around lead arm parallel. It can differ from player to player just based on the length of the swing, but generally, you know, for a full swing, it's gonna be around where that lead arm is parallel in the backswing, somewhere in that area. So I'm here, I'm driving that in, and then as I'm getting into this area, I'm starting to shift, I'm starting to recenter that pressure to, to my lead side. Now, before I start my downswing, I may not have this touching over here, but the pressure is shifting. I'm moving pressure into that area. So the pressure is preceding the motion of the, back, of the downswing. I'm not, I may not have it on there. It's typically gonna be recentered. I'm gonna be closer to level as I start my downswing, but I have to get that pressure moving from there to there before I start the downswing. If I go up to the top of the swing and I don't start to shift any pressure from there, I'm gonna start that downswing and by then it's too late. I'm gonna be hanging back. I'm gonna to tend to swing over the top. I'm just gonna have a hard time being consistent when I do that. So if I wanna be able to get this club to work down on plane, if I wanna be able to get my body rotating open and to be able to get shaft lean at impact, I have to have the proper sequence in the swing and that comes from getting that pressure into that lead foot before the downswing starts. So that has to happen in the last part of the backswing to be able to do that. So just in slow motion, it's gonna look like this, shifting the pressure. And then as I'm getting up into this area, I'm starting to recenter it as I get up to the top. And then I get that pressure in the lead foot. I'm gonna keep increasing that pressure all the way to impact as I come all the way around and I come around into the full finish. So if you have one of these, you can work on doing that sequence and do it really slow like I just did there and then start to build up the speed little by little by little. Now, as you get more and more comfortable with that, obviously we can't have this on the golf course, so it's not gonna do us much good, right, if, if we can't do it without it. So 
you want to start working and getting the same feeling of being able to do it without it. So I want to feel pressure into the trail foot, bringing it back, and I'm starting to shift that pressure back into my lead foot before I start the downswing. And now I want to really maximize that pressure as I'm coming through. So let's see if I can kind of put it all together here and see if I can get a good pressure shifted kind of swing here. Now, one thing that I didn't mention that is critical for this is getting a good turn of your body in the backswing. That's so critical for this because if I don't turn my body, I just don't have enough time to be able to get to my lead side. If I'm shifting pressure here and I'm only lifting my arms up to here and not turning my body, I just don't have enough time to get that pressure back to my lead foot and to be able to sequence the swing correctly. So in order to have a good sequence and to be able to also create enough space and time to accelerate the club, to have that effortless and powerful swing, I have to get a good turn of my shoulders. I mean, think about it. Look at players that have the most effortless looking swings. Look at Freddie Couples, right? He's getting a big turn. If you look at Ernie Els, big turn. All these players that have these really effortless looking swings, they all have big turns. So it's very, very important to have the proper sequence when you do that. So I have a fantastic bonus video for you where Clay Ballard, the founder of Tosby Golf, is gonna go over his best power turn drill that's gonna help you turning right and getting that sequence of the downswing correct. So if you'd like to see a preview of that video, just stick around, but if you'd like to see the whole video, all you have to do is click the iCard that's gonna appear up on your screen. If you don't see the iCard, no worries, you can click the link in the description below. Play well, and I'll talk to you soon. Most of the instruction out there today is killing you of your power. The things that they're telling you to do can make you hit it shorter, and worse than that, not even any more consistent. I'm gonna go over some of the real secrets to powerful, consistent golf in this video. Let's go and get started. So here's some of the keys into making that happen. If you wanna incorporate this in your swing, let me break it down exactly what you should do. Number one, let's focus on the belt buckle. This is another big misconception. I wanna keep that belt buckle facing the ball so I can really stretch out my midsection and really get loaded up. I'm not a big fan of that. That's really gonna kill your distance. In your backswing, I wanna feel like that belt buckle rotates to the right and you really let your hips and legs be loose. Notice how my legs are moving here. I'm not trying to keep those rigid and tight or I'm really just taking all the speed out of my swing. All right, so on that one, I really felt like I let my belt buckle rotate back. And a good key to this is feel like your knees are loose. Feel like when you make your back swing. Piece number two, let's go ahead and rotate our shoulders. When I let my lower body rotate, my upper body can rotate a lot better also. So if I let my hips move, my shoulders will move more. So here, once I've got my hips working well, I'm gonna add to that my shoulders making a big rotation. On average, on the PGA Tour, players are getting about 120 degrees of shoulder rotation. I don't see hardly anybody getting less than 90 degrees. So it starts with the hips, knees nice and loose, allow the belt buckle to rotate, and then from there, so those are two really big keys. But here's the truth. There's one thing, and if you don't do this correctly, nothing else is gonna work.